Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making a quick video about Smackdown. And, uh, let's, and uh, I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions. So let's get this started. We started things off with the Kevin Owens show. Where Kevin Owens... Where Kevin Owens said that he wanted to be tag team champion with Daniel Bryan. I think Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan is a pretty ordinary team, if you ask me. If I was to pair Kevin Owens with anybody to win the tag team titles, I'd really do it with Sami Zayn. To be perfectly honest. Who would love... I mean, I mean, I think everyone would love to see Sami two belts. I think people would love uh, Sammy Two Belts. So, I don't know. That's just what I thought. That's just what I thought, honestly. I just thought, you know, you know, Kevin and Sammy, I thought they'd be a better team. Like, I don't know if Kevin and Daniel is really, uh, really my ideal pairing. But, uh, maybe this, maybe this sets up Kevin Owens to eventually turn heel. Who knows? But it all led to Rude and Ziggler to come out, as well as Cesaro and Nakamura. Rude and Ziggler are the self-proclaimed greatest acquisition in SmackDown history. No! That's Sasha Banks. And also, and all, and also they call themselves the self-proclaimed greatest tag team. That's also incorrect. But, whatever. You got a lot of you're gonna make all these claims that you gotta back up your words. But either way, this eventually set up an eight man tag. Holla 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 player. Teddy Long, you know, making the match official. And uh and the baby faces ended up winning. The Street Profits would get the pin for victory, Montez Ford would pin Cesaro for the three. Didn't really care for the match, to be perfectly honest. Otis and uh, Tucker. The Law and Otis. And the Miz just gives JBL money to convince him to give the Miz the win. And now because of the Miz's victory, Otis, Otis now has to defend his Money in the Bank contract against the Miz at Hell in a Cell. Really? Really? I understand you want to get the... I understand you want to get the contract off of Otis. But are you for real? You mean to tell me a money in the bank, a contract that someone can win by climbing up a ladder is now treated like a championship? Yes, WWE's done it before in the past when... Um... Who... who who did they do that with again? I know they did it, did it with somebody. Braun. That's who. Braun Strowman. That's right. I'm trying to remember who it was. Braun. They did it with Braun. And uh, they did it with Braun when he was feuding with Kevin Owens. But the money, in, the money in the bank should not be treated like it's a championship. Like it shouldn't be passed around. You should have just had Otis win this court case. And his reward is having Tucker and Mandy either on SmackDown with him. Or he can choose to go over to Raw. And to be with them. But, whatever. Otis, I fully expect Otis to win uh, that match. We had Bianca Belair competing her first match on SmackDown, looking good with that ring gear, and she took on Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega, a very good wrestler in her own right, makes Bianca look really good here. Bianca just dominates her pretty easily, and uh, beats her with the KOD. Now, I think Zelina Vega would be a good... Now, I'm glad it wasn't Billy K, but I'm pretty sure it will be Billy eventually. But in my personal opinion, I think Zelina Vega could be 
you know, kind of like a jobber for the stars. Now, that may sound mean, and that may sound rude, that may sound pretty harsh, but you got to have someone do it. As they say, you got to have someone do it. I would rather it not be Billy Kay, because, you know, that's, that's how she's always been treated. I think because Zelina Vega is the better wrestler of her and Billy, I think it's just best to make Zelina Vega do it because, you know, she's the better wrestler. She can sell, you know, a lot better. And I think she can, you know, at least make people look good. I think she'll actually make people look good. She's a solid worker, and I think she can make people look good. But we'll see. But, 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 but we'll see. But I think Zelina is definitely a uh, future star in the making on uh, SmackDown. She's definitely going to be a future star. And I think Billy will too. But, you know, Bianca is the one they're building up here. Bianca's the one they're building up. So it makes sense for her to make quick work of Zelina Vega. Then we had Lars Sullivan, the the big bo the big bum, the big bum, oh, the big bum, Lars Sullivan. Uh, he squashed Chad Gable. And speaking of that, I don't have to worry about calling him Shorty J anymore because he quits. To, he quits. And then he explains backstage that he's quit. That he quits being Shorty G. He's sick of the Shorty G attire. He's sick of the Shorty G. Be happy with who you are. You know he's happy. With, you know he talks about he talks about all the shit that he was told as the Shorty G character. He said he he's done with that. He says he 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 says he doesn't care about that anymore, and he reverts himself back to Chad. Gable, we can now finally put the Shorty G stuff to rest. Chad Gable is officially Chad Gable again, and Chad Gable should never be changed to another name ever again. It seems like Vince McMahon finally got tired of all the short jokes. I guess Shorty G just lost its, I guess it lost its flavor. I guess it's no longer funny. I guess it was no, it was never funny to begin with. But I guess to Vincent Man, well, Shorty G is no longer funny. Calling him short's not funny anymore, so let's just revert him back to Chad Gable. Will it help his career? Probably not. But, but at least we can all finally breathe a sigh of relief that Chad Gable has finally put the Shorty G name to bed. We have Bailey and Sasha Banks. They have their segment. Bailey talks about how Sasha has been trying to force her to sign the contract, and how she talked about how Sasha said that her name is bigger than Bailey's championship. Sasha would come out looking great as always, and Sasha would indeed force Bailey to sign the contract. And now this, and now, and now I'm worried. Now I'm worried. WWE literally had Sasha Banks stand tall on the Go Home Show. This is the last show before Hell in a Cell. They literally had Sasha Banks force Bailey to sign the contract by putting the bank statement on her on, on the chair. You know what that means, right? Sasha, Sasha has momentum. Bailey on the floor, forced to do something she didn't want to do. That basically means Sasha isn't going to win. That's basically what that means. That basically means Sasha ain't winning in Hell in a Cell. And that scares me. That scares me. Because it's... It, it scares me because it, this is something we've been wanting for for a long time. We've been wanting to see Sasha finally win the damn title. Bailey has been champion for a year now. She's been champion for a year. How in the world can you... How in the world could you have Sasha stand tall? I know you had to have Bailey sign the contract, but what I said last week, I feel like made the most sense. You have Sasha compete in a match with somebody, and then maybe you have Bailey attack Sasha. 
And she arrogantly, and Bailey arrogantly signs the contract. She she signs it at, at because of her arrogance that she was that that she didn't sign it because Sasha was pushing her to sign it. But now that she's flattened Sasha, she's like, oh well, I'll sign the contract now because I because I because I'm better than you. But no, they had Sasha literally force her, and now that scares me. And now that scares me that Sasha isn't going to win at Hell in a Cell. They're hyping up that Sasha Banks has competed in two Hell in a Cell matches. Yeah, she didn't win both of them. And both of them were really good matches. Charlotte versus Sasha, Hell in a Cell, that was a great one. Even though I didn't like it back in the day. I didn't really like it that much back in the day, but, you know. If you guys look back at my early days when I did these reviews, I was a really, 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 I was really bad. I was really bad back then. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm. I'm, I'm different now, because man, I hated. Man, I. Man, man, man. I was really, really bad back then. But. Uh, but whatever. The the old me, the the me from the past is is gone. So I. So yeah. The Charlotte Sasha one was good, where Charlotte won, and Becky and Be Becky and Sasha's last year was also really good. And I expected Sasha to lose that one last year, but I had full confidence coming into this year that I really had full confidence that Sasha is now going to win Hell in a Cell. But now, but now after seeing Sasha just literally force Bailey to sign the contract by bullying her with the chair, now I'm worried. Now I'm worried that Sasha for a third straight time she's going to lose inside Hell in a Cell. They can say Sasha is competing in Hell in a Cell three times if they want, but if she's not going to win them, why even bother? It's like her, it's like her WrestleMania record. Seriously. Sasha not winning inside Hell in a Cell is like her WrestleMania record. She's 4-0 at WrestleMania. She can't buy a victory at WrestleMania. But now, and now you're going to tell me she can't buy a win inside Hell in a Cell? Come on, just let this girl win. How can someone like Sasha Banks, who's been a face and heel, lose so many feuds? Bloody Charlotte has been face and heel so many times, and she's won every time. She rarely ever loses. She rarely ever does lose. But the only times I ever remember Charlotte losing in a situation like Sasha Banks was two years ago when Becky Lynch turned heel. Remember that? When, 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 when Becky turned heel and everyone refused to accept her as a heel? What, ha what happened at the two pay-per-views they competed at? Well, I should say three. What happened in the three pay-per-views they competed in when Becky was the heel? Charlotte was the champion. She lost to Becky. She lost to Becky at Hell in a Cell after being turned on, after being portrayed by her friend. Then at Super Showdown, she lost again by DQ. Or was it? Or, or did Charlotte win by DQ? I think Charlotte won by DQ. But it was a DQ ending. And then at Evolution, Charlotte lost again. So... Charlotte never really got her revenge. So Charlotte never really got her quote-unquote revenge on Becky for turning on her. So that was the only time I ever remember Charlotte not getting her revenge. But every other time, Charlotte always wins everything. But other than that, that's like the only time I ever remember Charlotte never getting revenge on Becky Lynch for turning on her. And the only reason why that happened is because fans refused to accept Becky as a heel, so they forced to turn Becky face, and they had to be forced to turn Charlotte heel. That was the only reason why. Sasha Banks should win, no matter what. I don't care what she does. She can literally run Bailey over with a friggin' bus. She can run Bailey over with a bus for all I care. And I'd still say Sasha should win at Hell in a Cell. Sasha should be winning this match no matter what happens. How can you have someone like Bailey turn her back on her best friend and you're going to have Bailey be the one that stands tall in the end? You're going to have Bailey be the one that stands tall at the end? 
That's just completely unacceptable. How can you have Sasha Banks, who's been a face and heel in so, in so many of her feuds on the main roster, and all of her feuds she loses? She lost to she lost to Alexa in 2017. She lost to Charlotte in 2016. She lost to Oscar this year. She lost to Becky last year. She she lost to Ronda. She lost she lost to you you know everyone she's faced in big major feuds. She's lost. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Sasha has to win. I don't care if she I don't care if she if she stood tall on the go home show. She has to win. Bailey needs to do exactly what happened at NXT Takeover Brooklyn and this time Sasha kicks out. You know the ending to the NXT Takeover Brooklyn match? Do that, but instead Sasha kicks out. But either way, I think Sasha has to win at Hell in a Cell no matter what. But knowing this company, Bailey is most likely walking away with the win. Knowing knowing this company, that's most likely what they're going to do. They're probably going to have Sasha, you know, lose again. Big match Banks has to lose all of the big five-star classics that she uh, puts on. And we had Murphy take on Seth Rollins. This was a good match, but the only problem I had with it is, of course, Murphy losing. Seth Rollins gets the win with the curb stomp. Aaliyah comes down to protect Murphy, which leads to Dominic being attacked by Seth Rollins because Dominic comes out. Then Ray comes out. And then Seth Rollins runs away. And Dominic and Ray, once again, are being all... Bossy with Aaliyah telling her what to do, and then you then you got Ray and Dominic arguing over that. Oh, this is none of our business, and well, if it's none of your business, well, okay, well, okay, this is the okay, 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 okay. If this situation between Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy is none of your business, how come? You've been feuding with this man since May. Since May, you have been feuding with Seth Rollins. Now you don't want anything to do with Seth? Now you now you don't want to have anything to do with Seth? Oh, Aaliyah is getting involved with, with, with Murphy and Seth. Oh, oh, it's none of your business because it's it, because it's none of your business. Anything that has to do with Seth Rollins has been your business since May. If it's none of your business, then let Aaliyah handle it. Then let Aaliyah do it then. If it's none of your business, then why do you keep harassing Aaliyah to leave Murphy alone? If it's none of your business. I don't get it. I don't get the Mysterio family. They're just a bunch of dumbasses. But Aaliyah... And Murphy have a little look at each other. Murphy, uh, Aaliyah looked like Aaliyah, looked like Aaliyah was giving Murphy a hug. What it looked like. And why do I have a feeling Aaliyah's going to turn heel? Why do I have a feeling that Aaliyah is going to kick Murphy, going to kick Murphy right in the groin? And she's going to reveal that she was been working with Seth Rollins all along. I don't know why. I've just got that weird feeling. That that's probably what's what's going to happen. And in the main event, J Jimmy Uso, uh, Jimmy Uso made his return. And and the Usos managed to get the upper hand on on Roman Reigns. And the consequences to Roman Reigns and the and consequences and Roman Reigns has said that if Jay Uso quits, he has to do he and Jimmy. It, it, either it's him and Jimmy or if it's just Jay. That Jay has to do what Roman tells him. 
as the tribal chief. He has to do what he do he has to do exactly what he tells him, or else Jimmy Uso, Naomi, and their children will be booted out of the Samoan bloodline family. Okay then. Naomi's not Naomi's on Raw, so why would that concern you? Why would that cons why would Roman care about Naomi? She's on Raw. I don't know, man. But I will say those consequences are very interesting. I think Roman indeed wins. I think Roman does indeed win. And yeah, that's really all I got to say about that. So, so yeah, that was pretty much your SmackDown review, guys. Pretty short. Uh, did I like the Did I like the show? Mm, it was okay, I guess. It wasn't too It wasn't too horrible. But at the end of the day, this was the go home show. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your opinions down below. And see you all next time. See you then.